Continuing with the Friday the 13th Ultimate DVD Collection, Friday the 13th, Part 2. It's been five years since the events of the first movie, and more supermodels are now coming to a camp nearby, and that doesn't mean that they're safe. They meet Crazy Ralph, and at this point I just have to say I love this character. I love how he just shows up, tells people, you're going to die, and then walks off. In this one, he even bikes away. That's just hilarious. Anyway, the people are about as stupid as they were in the first one, and we again have the one obnoxious character and the other characters who just really don't have enough personality to even be remembered at all. The running time is shorter and the body count is higher. This one does not go for the whole stalking thing as much and there might be a little less of the POV shots but it also just really doesn't build up all that well or all that much to pretty much all of the deaths in this there aren't even really that many good, memorable deaths. The gore is again seen very briefly. I presume it's again the MPAA, and maybe they still didn't want to completely focus on that, though the higher body count really goes against that. I mean, the first one had a much higher body count than it needed in the first place, so. The score is about the same, and Jason does now use a machete, and he's got the bag with the one hole for the one good eye. In case you're wondering what happened to, I think her name is Alice, from the first one, we find out in the first scene of this, she's seen remembering how average the first was and writhing in agony on account of remembering. Then she wakes up from the memory of waking up from a nightmare and she has a brief conversation on the phone with her mother in which it's alluded to that she's trying to work through the issues and then we see that apparently she's doing this by drawing mildly unsettling images faces with some red, some black, and some yellow on them. That's it. I guess it really didn't get to her all that much. She's killed. This really isn't a spoiler. It happens the first ten minutes or so. I don't know. I guess they just felt they needed to tie up all the loose ends or something. The opening is okay, and the ending is fairly suspenseful and exciting. But other than that, this really is very phoned in. It's like, okay, we made a movie, it made money, let's make more. And the first one wasn't that good. It was it was average at best. It just it had more death and more gore than Halloween, but Halloween is by far the superior film. This one doesn't even redo the things. It's like they expected that just because they now have, you know, a batch of young men who I suppose are supposed to be attractive to the female audience, or the curious audience, and a bunch of young girls who, some of whom, undress partially or completely, and many of whom wear nice tight shorts and other tight clothing. One of them in shorts is struck with a pebble from, I don't remember, Dennis the Menace, you know, the whole thing. 
don't remember the word. And apparently it hurts so much that the pain transfers to the other buttock, because that is where she touches to. I don't know, maybe she was against touch, you know, turning the other cheek, I don't know. Anyway, it's like they expect that just because they're there, we're supposed to be worried that something will happen to them, even if we don't really see anything threatening to happen to them. Basically, you know, people die from one second to the next in this. There's no real build-up before the deaths in most cases. The ending is pretty good. I think the whole movie should have been more of that because it's the only time the movie is particularly scary. The effects... They're okay. There's really nothing that's as good as the best of the first one. Or as creative. The pacing is really not that good. You're not interested in this for most of the film. The acting is terrible. Absolutely terrible. The one obnoxious character is, as is often the case with these, completely unrealistic. He even does the shtick of being a obnoxious and random when there's no one around, you know, when the camera is the only thing that could see it. Yeah. This does build a little on the mythology of the first one. I won't tell you how. Excuse me. And it's okay. It's... It's not the most interesting thing they could have thought of, in my opinion, but it's okay. And I get where it comes from because it does relate to, you know, the first one. And I think that's basically it. It's really not all that good, but the opening and the ending aren't bad. Yeah, that's basically it. So, that was my spoiler for review of Friday the 13th Part 2. Hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you next time.